I'm going to demonstrate how to solve a second order constant coefficient non-homogeneous differential equation with a pair of boundary conditions using the Laplace transform. The equation I'm going to look at is actually relatively simple. It turns out that the Laplace transform is a rather complicated method to use on this equation. Other methods you might have learned elsewhere are simpler. Nevertheless, this is a good place to start and it does demonstrate the use of the Laplace transform and also one of the advantages which is that the Laplace transform method automatically incorporates the boundary conditions without leaving them to the end. We will get the solution with the boundary conditions included as the result of using the Laplace transform. Before doing the, the transform solution I'd like you to stare at this equation and ask yourself what sort of solutions you'd be expecting. It's often a good idea with an equation like this. Then you can sometimes diagnose errors that you might have made when you get to the end of the solution. In this case we've got e to the power 2t on the right. I think it's reasonable to expect that e to the power 2t is likely to be part of a particular solution for this equation. To find out what other kinds of thing might be there we'd better look at the auxiliary equation. I'll use r for the variable. The auxiliary equation says r squared minus 5r plus 4 equals 0. I've chosen this equation so that it factorizes easily. We get r minus 4 and r minus 1 as the factors. That suggests that probably e to the 4t and e to the t ought to be in our Laplace transform solution. If we find exponentials other than those, we'd be rather surprised and we might have to look for an error. OK, let's get going on the transform now. Let me remind you of some notation first of all. The Laplace transform of y of t is usually written with a capital Y of s. We also have a result for the first derivative. The transform of the first derivative is as given here and incorporates the first of the boundary conditions, little y of 0. For the second derivative, we have L of the second derivative, now looks like the right-hand side of the bottom line here, and it incorporates both of the boundary conditions. We'll need to use those straight away as we take the Laplace transform of our original differential equation. So without further ado, let's get going on that. L of y double primed it was minus 5y primed and plus 4y. That's the left hand side and doing the same thing on the right we take the Laplace transform. It was just e to the 2t wasn't it? OK, now we need to write out the details of the left hand side. First of all for the second derivative s squared large y minus s y of 0 minus y primed of 0. That's the second derivative. Let's tick it off as we go. Then there's the first derivative, so minus 5 and that was s times large y minus little y of 0. We can tick that one off and then there's a plus 4 and just capital Y. So that's dealt with. Then on the right hand side we either know or we look up the transform for e to the 2t and that's 1 over s minus 2. My next step, or rather steps, will be to do the following. I will collect the terms containing capital Y and I will substitute the values for Y of 0 and y primed of 0. Those were the boundary conditions. Let's remind ourselves. y of 0 was 1, y primed of 0 was 0. So actually that means we can cross out y primed of 0. It's not there because its value is 0. OK, so now let's start the process. For capital Y we have an s squared minus 5s that's that term and that term, and then this one plus 4. 
capital Y. I'm going to take everything else to the other side. So there's already a 1 over S minus 2 there. And then the other terms are the SY of 0. But Y of 0 was 1, remember. So that's plus S. Let's start with that term. And the other one, minus 5 times minus Y of 0. That makes plus 5. So that will go over the other side as minus 5. Now, if we've done things right, we should recognize the coefficient of y on the left now as being just like the left-hand side of the auxiliary equation, except it's written with s instead of r. So I know I can factorize that. Into s minus 4, s minus 1, y equals the right-hand side. And so now I'm going to divide by those two factors to get y of s. And that's 1 over s minus 2, s minus 4, s minus 1, plus still s minus 5 over s minus 4, s minus 1. This is a good example of a place where we need partial fractions. Let's take the right hand side and express it as three separate fractions because there are three possible denominators. There'll be a over s minus 1 and there'll be a b over s minus 4 and a c over s minus 2. Okay, so now I need to try some values of s. I'm not going to do all the details here I'll just tell you roughly what happens. You can work out the details on paper if you want. First of all, well, I suppose we'd better actually multiply through. Sorry, I should have said this first. Multiply through both sides by that denominator. And then we'll try out some values of s. So that will give us 1 plus s minus 5, s minus 2. That's the left-hand side equals a s minus 4 s minus 2 plus b s minus 1 s minus 2 plus c s minus 1 s minus 4 and now I try the three obvious values of s first of all I try s equals 1 that gives me the following result 5 on the left and 3a so a is 5 over 3 okay there's a bit of calculation there but you can check that on paper then I try s equals 2 and that gives me 1 is negative 2c so c is negative a half and then finally I try s equals 4 and that gives me negative 1 equals 6b so b is minus 1 sixth okay so now we can put together our partial fractions and remember this was the Laplace transform y of s so with a equals 5 thirds that's 5 thirds 1 over s minus 1 and then a b minus a sixth and that's 1 over s minus 4 and c minus a half 1 over s minus 2 and now we simply take the inverse transform on both sides on the left that gives me the function I'm interested in finding little y of t and on the right well they're just three different exponentials aren't they? 5 thirds e to the 1t minus a sixth e to the 4t minus a half e to the 2t. Do you remember what we did when we speculated at the beginning what solutions ought to contain? e to the 2t, part of the particular solution, and then the auxiliary equation suggested e to the t and e to the 4t. So this does seem to have come out right. I'm going to do just a couple of checks. I'm going to check y of 0 
that's five thirds minus a sixth minus a half and if you turn that into sixths it's ten minus one minus three which is six sixths so that does come out to equal one so we can tick that it's the correct boundary condition and then for y primed of t differentiating exponentials we have five thirds e to the t minus four over six but that's two over three e to the four t and bringing two down makes minus one e to the two t and so checking y prime to zero is five thirds minus two thirds minus one which is zero and that has also come out correctly and as usual in these problems I'll leave it for you to check that the ODE is satisfied by this claimed solution. It does work.